Hi guys, Dave here and welcome to the channel. I'm going to show you how I built this three degree of freedom motion racing simulator out of just basic parts. A few things I had to order, but here we go. Well, maybe I was like you before the lockdown. I was driving along on my Logitech setup. I had the wheel clamped to either a TV tray or to my desk and I was having a great old time playing on a set of Corsa. So for whatever reason, I started looking at YouTube tutorials on how to go faster. And I ran across these things called motion sims. And I thought, wow, that's cool. Maybe I could build that myself instead of spending thousands of dollars, which I really didn't want to do. I found some information on the xsimulator.net forum. And I decided that, hey, if I could get two motors working, hey, maybe I'll just go ahead and build it but I'm not gonna to totally commit to building it unless I can get this thing working. I got an Arduino Uno. Um, it's a microcontroller, it's about 30 bucks. You can get them for less. And I got three of these IBT2 motor controllers that control these three motors. Um, and I have a video on how to do that, real cheap, DIY. All right. So I have a minor success. I've got both motors working. So if I switch to motor one. Everything takes off on motor one. And motor two, same thing. And it actually works. So I decided to start designing my rig. So I wanted two degree of freedom with traction loss. So I designed this upper frame and that's right here. It's gonna pivot on this uh, U-joint, a middle frame, which will roll on rolling um, roller skate wheels on the bottom frame. Now that'll provide the uh, traction loss. So here it is, after it was finished, I have the upper frame, which is all one piece. It uh, has the shifter, the pedals are mounted to it, and the wheel. Um, this particular, the monitor and the, uh, the, the wind sim, that is all stationary and hooked to the lower frame. Okay, so the mid frame. The mid frame has a pivot point right up here in the front, right here. And I have a couple videos on that. We roll back here, the whole thing moves with these, uh, these skateboard wheels. There's one right here because most of the weight is right here. There's the U joint and there's the end wheels right here. So it just moves back and forth. I can move it by hand, but uh, the motors do a real good job of moving it. So just before Christmas 2019, my wife ordered me this sim rig frame off of Amazon, and it was way better than what I had. But I'd already planned out in my head, at least, that I was gonna build a three degree of freedom rig. But take a look at it. It had a seat, it had a nice stand for the shifter, pedals, and that steering wheel. But once I put it together, I realized it wasn't all that stable. But I figured I could use some of the parts on my own DIY rig. Really chomping at the bit on this thing, so I had to get started building the, the upper frame, this, the frame for the seat. These have to be at a 90. It, it sh I should be able to clamp it and uh, put it down. It should be not, a, not too big of a deal. These little pieces here are going to extend for the seat. Now one of the tricks I found is if you use a, a razor knife to score the metal, you can see the line that you need to cut really clearly. All right, after cutting those pieces, um, just put them in here. I went ahead and just trimmed this down. It had little ends on it. I figured it'd be a little bit lighter if I just put it in here. Now I'd never welded before, so I did have to buy a welder. So I bought this cheap one. Um, comes with a lot of different things, a glove 
and a hat. Then I made the seat frame to the traction loss frame or the mid frame with a U-joint. Now here's a couple shots. This is the seat frame attached to the mid frame with the U-joint. And now here's the seat. I use this to uh, make sure that the pedals are about right. Here's the back view of it. And finally, the motors are going to push up against this one inch tubing frame on the back of the seat. By this time, my wife started getting a little bit anxious because she thought I was building another race car. And it kind of looks like a race car. And that's cool. Hey guys, please hit the subscribe and the thumbs up button to let YouTube know that people like you, sim racers, like this type of content. It really helps me to grow the channel. I appreciate it. So to mount the motors that move the top frame, I had to bend some steel and put a little cross brace in. Here's a shot of the seat in place. And now the motors and Hall Effect potentiometers mounted. Finally looking at the tie rods to the seat mounted up. So I've got two degrees of freedom. It's definitely time to add that third motor and take it for a test. This thing was so fun that I started posting some videos on YouTube for my friends and relatives. Then I started fine tuning some things and adding a, a few different pieces of kit like the cool THA shifter. I really wanted to run this thing in VR. I had an Oculus Rift and I thought the VR experience was awesome. So I started adding some pieces of kit and fine tuning the rig the way I like it. Now for me, those crab pot oh, motors man. that I bought produce enough force to make it really realistic yeah, and I have a great time. Since this rig is designed primarily to run in VR, I decided to upgrade a few components. So I got a, some butt kickers, a CSL Elite wheel, uh, V3 pedals, and I have a great time driving this thing. And uh, it wasn't very expensive, really just basic components. And I learned how to weld a bunch of different cool things. Hey, you can do this too. I answer questions on the channel, so feel free to, to leave comments and definitely subscribe give me a good thumbs up especially if you like do-it-yourself sim rig type stuff or do-it-yourself anything all right well i'm gonna get this video posted d max out